Welcome to our electron line. We can use triple integrals not just to find the volume, but to find other things as well, such as the mass of a cylinder. Since it's a cylinder, we probably should use cylindrical coordinates. And what we're trying to do here is find the mass of a cylinder that has variable density. The density is equal to a constant times z. In other words, the density increases as you go up in height. The density is defined as the mass divided by the volume, which means the mass is equal to the density times the volume. And if we take a small little volume element, the small amount of mass of that can be called dm, which will then be the product of the density times that small volume element. And in cylindrical coordinates, the volume element will be r dr d theta dz. So when we want to find the mass, we're simply going to use the triple integral of dm. And since dm is, in, is indicated to be density times dv, we can say that's the integral of density times dv. And the density is k times z. So this can be written as the triple integral of k times z times dv. And dv is r dr d theta dz. Now it's all about finding the limits of integration. Notice we're going to integrate over r, the radius, we're going to integrate over the angle theta, and we're going to integrate over z. So we'll find out what those limits are. Also notice we have a z here, so that goes with the dz, we have an r that goes with the dr, and k is a constant which can come outside the integral sign. So that means we end up with the mass is equal to the k, the constant, times a triple integral. So we can say that r is going to go from 0 to the radius a. Theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi because we're going to integrate all the way around the cylinder. And then z is going to go from 0 to the height of the cylinder and then we call that h. All right, now we're ready to put in what we have left. So we have an r dr r dr d theta and z dz. Okay, I think we're ready now to try to integrate that. Starting with r dr, everything else stays constant. So we can say that the mass is equal to k times, we still have the other two integrals over z and theta, and then r dr becomes r squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to a, and then we still have a d theta and a z dz left. Okay, when we put in the limits of integration, plug in 0, we get nothing. Plug in a, we get a squared over 2, which is a constant. That can come outside the integral sign. So we have k a squared over 2, and then we have the double integral left, one for theta and one for z. So we have d theta and z dz. Okay, next, let's integrate over d theta. And so we'll go from theta equals 0 to 2 pi. And the integral of d theta is simply theta. So this becomes equal to k a squared over 2. We still have the integral left over z. And then we have theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. And we still have a z dz left. Okay, notice when you plug in the limits of integration, you plug in 0, you get nothing. Plug in 2 pi, you get the constant 2 pi, which can go to the front. The 2's will cancel, so this becomes equal to k a squared pi times the integral from z equals 0 to h of z dz. And finally, we can now do the third integral, so this becomes k a squared times pi times z squared over 2, because when we integrate z dz, we get z squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to h. And so we plug in h, we get h squared over 2, so this becomes equal to k pi a squared h squared divided by 2, and that would be the mass of that cylinder with the variable density. So let's take a quick look, k a squared pi h squared divided by 2. Yep, that should be it. And that's how we do that.